Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Yesterday I talked about the evolution of technology over my career, and I started to segue in that video into programming languages, and I said that could be its own video. Then I realized someone had asked me that exact question. Developer Developer 67 asks, Tim, can you compare C, C++, and C Sharp and talk about your experiences making games with these languages early on in your own engines and later on in Unity for Pillars? And also tell us what did you enjoy more doing? And that's a good question and it ties in really good with yesterday's video. Let me roll back a little. So before I jump into this, just as a reminder, I started my programming journey with BASIC on the... Atari 800. And then that led me into assembly because I wanted to figure out how some of the games worked. And the game, a lot of the good, really good games on the Atari 800 were in assembly. So that's what I started with. But then when my school taught, had a computer science class and it taught Pascal. So I learned Pascal. Pascal was my first compiled language. Basic is interpreted and assembly is of course just assembled. Um, Pascal was the first compiled language where you write your code, you run it through a compiler and get an executable, and then you run the executable. It kind of blew my mind that the difference between compiled and interpreted. Interpreted was easy to learn because you could go right along and, you know, you could write, you could sometimes just type it right in and, and run code that way. You could do, type it in a line at a time and watch things happen. But Pascal was much faster than basic, the compiled Pascal. And it had a lot more powerful features, pointers, and all these other really cool things. And I, I learned my first debugging, where you actually put breakpoints and ran code and saw where it braked and saw what the current values of variables were. And that was fascinating. And that was high school. When I went to college, I went to engineering school at the University of Virginia for computer science. And as part of that degree, I had to learn a ton of languages. It's where I first um, was exposed to C academically, but I'm going to put a pin in that, um, and C++, and a lot of other languages, Snowball, Lisp, Ada, uh, just a bunch of different things. Now, C, I learned C academically at UVA in the last year I was there, so 86, 87, but I had an overview class in 84 of a bunch of different languages, and C was one of them, and the year before that in 1983 is when I started working on Grand Slam Bridge at Cybron, and that was written in C. So basically I started doing a lot of work in C professionally and in college. And so C was kind of my go-to language. It's what I understood. It's what I learned a lot of tricks in, you know, things like um, recursion, where a function would call itself, uh, somewhat useful, Do, using like arrays and to... Um, making structures with pointers and making just a whole bunch of different structures, linked lists and doubly linked lists and hash tables and vectors and just all kinds of things that you could build out of the basic fundamental pieces that C gave you. I use C for all of my professional games from Grand Slam Bridge all the way up to Bloodlines. Bloodlines was in C++, but every other game... Um, <laughs> Sorry, the dog decided that now is a good time to play. So Grand Slam Bridge and Bard's Tale Construction Set and Rags to Riches and Fallout and Arcanum and Temple of Elemental Evil are all in C. So I had a really good grounding in how to use C for games. However, the engine, the source engine, which we used for Bloodlines, which came from Valve, was in C++. So we switched. Now, a lot of people ask, why didn't you switch earlier? I was asked that question a lot. In fact, I was asked that question in a very rude and direct way when we were shopping around Arcanum. Uh, somebody basically said that I was an idiot 
uh, a potential publisher said that I was an idiot for not using C++. And my response was, I compared C++ and C. Usually the same compiler could do both. Um, and I compared their output. I found optimization throughout the 90s worked way better on C code than C++ and the resulting executables were smaller. And that combination just led me to mainly work with C. You had to watch your memory and speed back then. Now, by the time Bloodlines came along, we didn't have a choice. We used C++ and I was pleasantly surprised that optimization had gotten better. It wasn't perfect. Uh, even in the 2000s, you would frequently compile your code with some optimization flags and it wouldn't work. But then you turn off the optimization flags and it would work, meaning there was a bug in optimization. Then you look at the assembly, find out that it had unrolled a loop incorrectly or put in an uh, incorrect jump and you fix it. By the way, it, it shocked me to my core in the 2010s that there were professional programmers using C++ compilers that did not know you could do that. That what they would do is if, if something wasn't working, they would switch off all the optimization. And if it worked, they would either switch on, switch them on back on one at a time until it broke and then not use that optimization. Or they'd use pragmas to turn off optimization in certain parts of the code, but they never actually figured out why it was broken. They would just kind of work around it. Surprised me, but it's true. So anyway, I started using C++ a lot from Bloodlines on. It was what we used in every game after Bloodlines. Well, except for the Unity games, but I get to that. C++ to me as a C programmer felt like C with classes. Now, yes, C++ has a lot of other features, but I discovered that a lot of programmers want to use those features when they're not needed and also when they lead to overly complex, hard to read code. And they would always deny that their code was hard to read. But sure enough, six months later, we'd have a bug and we'd be back in their code. I'm like, well, what are you doing here? And they'd be like, uh, I don't know. I don't remember because their code was so obtuse. It was, it was needlessly complex. And the two things I found made C++ code remarkably hard to go back to was when people overused operator overloading and inheritance. So operator overloading is when you're like, I'm going to redefine plus to mean something else for this particular class. And inheritance is, I'm going to have this method I can call, but on subclasses, I'm going to, I'm going to inherit from it. So this, this class inherits that function and does something different when it's called. Maybe it'll call the base function. Maybe it won't. But what happens is you end up looking at code and it looks like it's calling a function and you think in your head, you know what it's doing, but oh no, that one's up. That, that, that method is, is overloaded. It's actually, or it's inherited. It's actually doing something else. So I found it abused a lot. Now, don't get me wrong. Overloading and inheritance are great techniques in the wrong hands. They're abused. Um, I'll give you an example of, of, of where two excellent programmers in my mind would argue about things in C++. When we were working on Carbine, two programmers who I both thought were really smart were arguing over whether or not we were going to use the standard temp template library, STL. One wanted to use it. He said, we're wasting time here. We're reinventing the wheel. We're remaking linked lists and hash tables and vectors. It's stupid. We should just use STL. Another programmer didn't want to use STL because he said, a lot of them don't come with source code, so they're intensely hard to debug. So you run into, you're, you're debugging something and you're like, I don't know if the bug was this was never put into the, the map or the map is incorrectly not retrieving it. And they both made a really good case. It was really hard for me to decide. I think what we finally ended up doing is we found a very plain vanilla STL with source code. And I told people to use those if they want it. Um, anyway, it was that's a good example of C++. There's so much you can do with it that you're tempted to do so much with it that things just become complicated when they don't need to be. Anyway, um, Source was the first engine uh, that I ever used that wasn't one that I made in-house. But we were back to in-house for Wildstar. And while we did code the game in C++, I experimented with C Sharp for the tools. I was, um, it was a lot easier to do UI in C Sharp. 
And it was also a little faster to develop things in C-sharp. It was, once again, you're back to a very simple, I believe it was interpreted, um, although you could compile it too. However, its optimization was terrible. This was 2005, 2006. I wrote the same programs in C, C-sharp, and C++. And the C-sharp one was an order of magnitude slower than the other two. The other two would do something in a second that the C-sharp one would take 30 seconds to a minute to do. Um, I was using, I was doing image processing, like applying conv convolution matrices, kernels, to do things like sharpen, blur, edge detect, emboss, those kind of things. And the C-sharp one was super slow. So I was very unimpressed with that. When I went to Obsidian in 2011, we were back to using their in-house engine. It was all in C++. Um, but I had to learn how to use it because the, we were, the engine had been made for Dungeon Siege 3 and we were repurposing it for South Park. Figured it out. Um, but the very next game was Pillars. And this is where I was finally like, oh, I'm finally going to have to use C-sharp. Because in Pillars, you have to either do Java or C-sharp. And... You don't really get to code the engine. The engine is opaque to you, but you get calls out. Things like when your class starts, you get a call. Every tick, you get a call to your update. You can get calls when an event happens. You can say, hey, I need someone to call me when a status effect is applied to me. And then the status effect system, when it applies something to someone, says, call their event that a status effect has been applied. So you can do things like that. Turns out you have to do things like that because there was a lot of optimization issues we had where people tried to do everything on the update. It was very tempting to just wait until you get your update and then go, did I get a new status effect applied to me? Now, how would you know that? You'd either have to keep a list of your old status effects or you'd have to put a flag in on a status effect. And when you, once you see it, you mark it as dirty. And then you see if there's any non-dirty status effects on you, which means they must have been recently applied. I saw people doing stuff like that in Unity's update function, where what they should have been doing is listening for an event and have the class that does the thing they, they they care about make an event. So C sharp, not only was a little slow there, people were heavily abusing it and it was slow. So we used pillars of eternity. We used unity for pillars of eternity and tyranny. But then when we went to unreal, we jumped back to C plus plus. Um, and we did outer worlds in C plus plus. Not only was that faster, but you get the source code for the engine. So anything you don't like, you can change. Now, one thing that developer developer asked was my experience. Like, what, what did I prefer? If I had to pick now, I would say, if I had to pick a language to make a game, I'd pick C++ with C a very close second. And here's why. C++ is super powerful. The optimization and everything, all the compilers for it are really good now. It's easy to abuse it. But if you're careful, I think you can write really good code in C++. C would be my second choice because I'm super familiar with it. Um, compilers got really good with it for a while, although I, I wonder if that's leveled off. Um, but also C is very close to the metal. Like if you know you need to do something, if you need to arrange data in memory a certain way, or you need to write out particular memory locations, C is great because it just lets you flat out do that. Plus, when you compile the code, there's a one-to-one -one from the C language to assembly. So you can look and go, yep, that's exactly how I would have done that if I had written it by hand. And then C Sharp would be my third one, but with a caveat. C Sharp was by far the easiest one to learn. Now, for me, that might have been because I learned it after C and C++. But I found that among students, too, and new programmers. C Sharp is just pretty easy to learn. So if you were going to start now, grab C Sharp, grab Unity, learn how to code that way. However, I'd eventually, if I were you, go with C++. And that matches both my experience and what to use most commonly in the industry today. So I hope that answers your question. Developer, developer 67.